Hi and welcome to John's Maths Book. In this video we're going to be looking at derivatives and limits. If you like the video then please hit the like button and I'd be delighted and honoured if you'd subscribe to the channel. Without further ado, let's go over to the whiteboard. When we looked at finding the gradient or slope of a linear function f of x in an earlier video, we took two points on the line and calculated the rise divided by the run or the change in y with respect to x. This gave us the gradient or slope of the function. So looking at our function y is equal to fx on the left hand side of the board, I've marked in two points on the x-axis, so I've marked in x and then I've marked in x plus h, so h is some distance from x. The equivalent points on the y-axis are f of x and f of x plus h. So in this case, the change in y with respect to the change in x is equal to, so the change in y is f of x plus h minus f of x divided by the change in x. So that's x plus h minus x. Let's take this a stage further. Let's look at this non-linear function here. How do we find the slope of this? Well, there's not one single slope, but many. What we can do is find the slope of the tangent at any point on the curve. That's where derivatives come in. The derivative of a function gives us another function, which is the gradient of the tangent to any point on the curve. I've plotted the nonlinear function f of x on the left of the board and marked two points on the x-axis, x and x plus h. We saw with a linear function we could take two points on the line and calculate the gradient of the slope, which would be a constant. Let's go with this approach now and draw a secant line from point x on the x-axis to x plus h in an attempt to calculate the gradient of the tangent to the curve at point x. As you can see, the secant line is an approximation of the tangent we want to calculate, but not a very good one. Now let's make h smaller so that the point x plus h on the x-axis moves closer to the point x on the x-axis. This therefore moves the value of h closer to zero. Remember, h is zero at point x on the x-axis. Now if we draw another secant line, so that's the green line on the diagram, we see that this is still an approximation to the gradient of the tangent at point x on the x-axis, but it's a better approximation than the first. So it's a better approximation than the blue line that we first drew. So extending this, we find that the closer h gets to zero, the better the approximation. When h is zero, we are at point x on the x-axis, and we have the tangent to the curve. So we can say that the tangent to the curve at point x is the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by x plus h minus x, which is the limit as h tends to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. So now we can use this to find the derivative of a function. The derivative of a function will be another function which will give us the gradient of the tangent at any point on the graph of that function. So let's use this to find the derivative of the function f of x equals x squared plus 3. So the limit as h tends to 0 if we now substitute x plus h into the function, we get x plus h all squared plus 3, and then subtract x squared plus 3 from it, and divide all that by h. So expanding that out, we get the limit as h tends to 0 of x squared plus 2xh plus x plus h squared plus 3 minus x squared plus 3 divided by h. Simplifying this further, this becomes the limit as h tends to 0 of h multiplied into 2x plus h, all divided by h, which is the limit as h tends to 0 of 2x plus h. So as h tends to 0 in this limit, it tends to 2x. So 2x is the derivative of the function x squared plus 3. 
So f prime x is equal to 2x. And that will give us the gradient of the slope for any value of x.